What's going on friends and family? My name is Skylight and today I'm gonna be trying to one shot a top 10 list here In fact, I do it all the time, but this is a big top 10. Okay, but I really want to talk from the heart here If you let me do that, please. Thank you. I think you really appreciate it This is gonna be top 10 MMO RPGs just period, you know, not just free to play not just buy to play not just subscription based Whatever, you know, not not just you know action RPGs No, we're talking about specifically the massively multiplayer online role-playing games all that together those specific games That's right. So those specific games. There's not too many of those massive games out there, right? It's pretty obvious. It's pretty self-evident, but uh, maybe I can you know add a little bit of flavor to the conversation here So here's my ranking. Uh, they're not really ordered in anything special, right? All these games kind of cater to different audiences, etc. So yeah, they're just they're based kind of on I don't know whatever I, I just threw them on the list like that. Yeah, okay, cool so let's start off the list by talking about Arcage. Arcage is a sandbox MMO, uh, I guess when you, in terms of endgame, right? But whenever you first start the game, it doesn't seem like that. It actually seems very linear. You have a very, oh, like, literal line that you follow through progressing through the game. But that's just kind of like the leveling. Uh, when you actually get into the meat of the game, which takes a little bit, um, then it truly kind of becomes a sandbox. Yeah, so it's a PvP game, and with that, you know, uh, it's, eh, it's a little bit debatable how fun the game can be. I mean, it depends on your mindset, but the game is kind of a little bit sort of to win some people would say it's very pay to win uh, but it really depends on how you as a player play because in the end it is a sandbox game so just keep that in mind uh, other than that, Arcage is actually pretty unique because you can build houses, there's boats and things I guess you can make, and also there is a unique class system where you can kind of pick between three different classes and different abilities and that, so really unique um, character builder there. Yep. Anyways, moving on, we have a game called The Secret World. Yeah, so this game goes under the radar just non-stop, and maybe that's kind of a good thing, because it's allowed itself to focus completely on its niche, so yes, the combat probably leaves something to be desired, but in the end, The Secret World isn't just about its combat. Even though it sold itself in the very beginning, I remember it was constantly trying to advertise its unique combat system, because uh, you can kind of like deck build with all sorts of different abilities and stuff, but really, The Secret World, what makes it special is it has a very interesting role play community, like they take it very seriously. Not only that, but the, I guess, the, the world building of The Secret World and its story elements are extremely good. Probably the best in any game, okay? Definitely rivaling some games that just focus on the story. You know, even non-multiplayer games. So yeah, seriously. Next game we have is Terra. Terra is one of the biggest free-to-play MMOs out there. Not the biggest, actually, but in terms of, like, hardcore endgame raiding MMOs, like, free-to-play, Terra is, like, the MMO, okay? Now, it's not that optimized, to be honest, and it's a little bit older, and there are some interesting design decisions with some of its classes being gender locked, uh, especially to the lolly class, okay? Um, and it's a little bit cheesy in my opinion for some of the character designs, but then again, that's just my personal bias, right? But Terra is actually very interesting. If you're a fan of World of Warcraft with the end game raiding and you want that group content that's actually very uh, challenging, then Terra has sort of a unique take on that, slightly kind of sort of, because it does have action combat. It's really more like pseudo action combat, in my opinion. I don't think it's true action combat. It's nothing like what you would see in a proper action RPG. Um, maybe something or like Dragon Nest, actually. So yeah, not not quite true action combat, but it is actiony, I guess. Anyways, next up I have Wildstar here. Yeah, Wildstar I think is a, is a great game. It's a great MMO. It does have really uh, nice, challenging end game rating. It's nowhere near as popular as Terra. Um, obviously, we know the stories of Wildstar, but in the end, you know, it's it is a really polished, finely tuned game. Okay, there's really unique classes, really unique uh, mechanics and gameplay there. But it just kind of on the surface, it really does look like a lot of other games. Okay, and the questing is pretty boring. Even even like you know, there is a little bit of humor with that. If it doesn't tickle you, right, then it's it's not going to hit home, and it, it didn't. It really didn't. A lot of people would rather stick with their World of Warcrafts or play, you know, uh, I guess, you know, games that are already established, like Terra. So, yeah, Wildstar um, doesn't have that big of a population, but seriously, it is a solid game. It really is. RuneScape 3. Specifically, guys, I'm putting RuneScape 3 because during my streaming with Old School RuneScape, I definitely rage quit, okay? I feel like Old School RuneScape is for older players, nostalgic players, and the numbers are growing, but I really don't think that many new, new players are joining in RuneScape. I think a lot of just older players are, you know, constantly returning, which is, that's cool and everything, but even though I had nostalgia goggles on, equipped, dude, uh, yeah, it, I didn't really enjoy my time. I felt like it lacked a tremendous amount of polish that could have been polished up, um, you know, in the time that it's been, you know, since 2007. Yeah. Well, anyways, that, that game is RuneScape 3 now. So, yeah, you can play RuneScape 3 and have a lot of fun. There's a lot of polish. It's missing some of, like, I guess probably the uniquities that a lot of uh, people who play old school RuneScape uh, really want to be in the game, but it just doesn't exist. I don't know. I think it's debatable, but in my opinion, I think RuneScape 3 is the better product. 
That is probably going to be very contested in the comments, absolutely, but that is my opinion. If you want to play a really cool, fun, free-to-play game, check out RuneScape 3. And if you want to continue playing with a subscription, RuneScape 3 still has a pretty awesome endgame. You know, not all the big streamers are just playing old-school RuneScape. Most of them, yeah, but not everyone, okay? And not everyone enjoys all the bots that, you know, populate old-school RuneScape. So check out RuneScape 3, please. Next up, we have obviously World of Warcraft. I really honestly don't even need to say anything at this point. You know that it's all about that end game, okay? It's really more about those dungeons, playing with your friends, um, you know, at a casual level or hardcore with the raiding. That's what World of Warcraft mainly is. Uh, it's leveling is pretty fun though, if you just wanna make a free account, honestly, like seriously guys, if you just make a free account and play the undead starting zone, you'll actually have a really good time. It's seriously not bad. I think Worgen is also a pretty good starting zone. Let me know in the comments below what you think is the best starting zone, but seriously, um, I'll, I'll, like over the years, I've just constantly just been making new free-to-play <laughs> like little characters. And ever since Cataclysm, they reworked a lot of the stuff and it's freaking good, dude. It's really good stories. Anyways, if you actually do subscribe though, the end game is top notch. Only competed with, I guess, maybe something like Terra, kind of a barely, and uh, really Final Fantasy XIV is its only true competition. And then it's really kind of a different game at the same time. Next game we have is Black Desert. This is a true sandbox game. It's a giant, giant sandbox. And that's, uh, that's good and bad, of course. So it's good in the sense that you can kind of figure out new ways to play the game. Uh, you can play the game in ways that nobody really kind of thought you could do that. I mean, I, I didn't know you could just be a horse breeder. Some people are just like fishers and shit. Like it's, it's pretty crazy. But at the same time, the game only really offers, you know, different levels and, and flavors of grind, kind of. There, there's no raiding, there, there's no dungeons, proper dungeons. And there is PVP, but while the, while the mechanics of the Black Desert aesthetically look pretty cool, I guess, and mechanically they are like the most intense out of any MMO period, e even rivaling a lot of action RPGs. The thing is, is that it's not as balanced as a lot of people would like. Same, you know, same, uh, I guess, conversation that you would have with Arcage. So yeah, kind of sucks about that. Uh, Black Desert is a little bit pay to win, but I think it's been eased up a little bit. Okay, well, we'll have to see how the game evolves from here. But anyways, there is a conversation to be had about how Black Desert really, uh, you know, I guess fares against other people, you know, being fair. Elder Scrolls Online is the next game that I want to talk about, and this is a cool game that hits, I guess, three points, okay, and three different kinds of people, uh, or maybe four if you like all three points. Okay, so one, it's going to be the people that like dungeons. There, there are some dungeons. There is some group content to be had in this game. Dungeons um, throughout all levels. It's, it's very, I guess, light con considering things. Um, World of Warcraft has more dungeons, but I guess technically a lot of the World of Warcraft dungeons are, you just run through them, right? They're not... You know, they're kind of bypassed old content, so yeah. Anyways, Elder Scrolls Online uh, actually has pretty worthwhile content, I think. It's pretty good. It's not as in-depth as some of the more established games, but it's actually pretty fun, pretty cool. Next, we have the PvP, the world versus, well, it's like server versus, I don't know how they explain it in this game. Uh, anyways, it's faction versus faction versus faction. Uh, it's going to be similar to Guild Wars 2 or maybe something like Dark Age of Camelot, similar to that, but I think Elder Scrolls Online actually does it the best in, in terms of this. They don't have arenas or anything like that, so this is really their own one PvP mode, and it's really, really good with its siege combat. Uh, next up, then, we have just, like, the, the leveling. Just the leveling, the single-player content, essentially. Like, you can just, you know, run around the world, and it does feel kind of single-player, but everything is voiced. You know, all the quests are actually decent and good. And in my opinion, I feel like Elder Scrolls, like, just the series, the franchise as a whole, its world-building is not very exciting. It's very usual. There's a lot of cliche and tropes. But if you actually uh, listen to these quests, which you will listen because they're voiced, you get a lot of kind of character, and that's really, really good. So in that sense, the writing's good. Okay, next up we have Final Fantasy XIV, which is a pretty neat game. Okay, so some people are going to be turned off by Final Fantasy XIV because it's kind of slow-paced at the beginning. And honestly, that's why I haven't gone too much further in the game. But the truth is, is that like later on, you get way, way more abilities. And even though the game is still like overall mechanically a little bit slower you know you're not as mobile it's not as ridiculous as something like world of warcraft or guild wars 2 or wildstar um it's a little bit more tactical i would say but it's it still is like really fucking good gameplay there still is a lot to do um but yeah the final fantasy 14 is a game that you kind of immerse yourself in the story in, in your character and in the in the characters of the world as you level up if you can if you don't like it then you fucking don't like it and i guess that's how it is but the game is going to be focused on the end game okay the end game dungeon content so it's going to be basically the one true competitor to world of warcraft in terms of sub counts and also similar gameplay you know the the focus on design there so yeah final fantasy 14 is a high production mmo and its expansions coming out pretty freaking soon maybe by the time you see this video the expansion comes out and it's supposed to revamp some things you know add new of course it's an expansion but it's supposed to revamp some combat so i think with that a lot of people are going to jump 
into Final Fantasy XIV. Hopefully, it's a pretty cool game, and you can play it on PS4 as well, guys. And lastly, let's talk about Guild Wars 2. This is the MMO that I put the most amount of time into uh, because it's just a really fun, casual game. And there's just a couple of main points that make this game very, very special to me personally. One's going to be the seasonal events. OK, they have a living story update. So like it's, the, the campaign kind of like there is a single player campaign kind of similar to the Star Wars of the Old Republic. You can do that. OK, but there's also a living story update. So like it's episodic and it's just going to continuously expand. Right? That's pretty awesome. Then you have the season, the true seasonal events, which are like holiday events, or sometimes they're in-game holiday events. Like they don't, they're not parody with like real life holidays. Um, and they have mini games with these. They have like, you know, new Easter egg hunks, hunts, and they have all these new, of course, cosmetic items added to the game. But it's not just getting new cosmetic items. Like there's literal actual content always being added to the game. And there's some situations, uh, there's been some times where Guild Wars 2 has literally destroyed a city and then rebuilt the city. There have been times where entire zones have been like floored or burned across or, or plagued and then rebuilt and stuff. So it's really freaking awesome that Guild Wars 2 can permanently change because of this evolution. Also, its combat's pretty awesome. It does have a sort of esportish PvP scene with its structured PvP, and it does do have the, it has like the the world versus world versus world or server versus server versus server versus whatever. Anyways, it does have that. It's not, I mean, in my opinion, it's not as good as Elder Scrolls Online, but overall, the mechanics of Guild Wars 2, even though it's tab targeted, it's way more action packed than many games on this list or otherwise. Uh, and it does have an optional uh, action target system too. So it actually plays really good with the controller. I actually prefer to play it with a Steam controller. Works out just fine. So Guild Wars 2 is really fun. Uh, I like it. I know it doesn't have, you know, super hardcore end game rating, though they did just add in raids. Um, I think the game is going to just constantly evolve. And that's kind of been the point. So, yeah. Anyways, friends and family, that's the end of the top 10 list. These games honestly really speak for themselves. They're massive games. They're massive productions. They probably had a massive advertising uh, campaign, so you probably know about them a little bit. But if you missed a game, you know, there's a couple on this list that really were under the radar, then hopefully you have been enlightened that, yes, they are among the greats. They really are. It's not just one or two MMO that are truly massive. There's a lot of massive games out there that just massively go under the radar. Anyways, so those are my, I guess, my personal pick for top 10. They do kind of explain themselves, so hopefully, you know, I didn't need to Wikipedia page this shit so that you guys know what these games are. Just wanted to give you my personal thoughts and feelings on these games, and uh, I guess I'll just end off by saying, personally, coming into the future, I personally will be playing Black Desert a lot, I'll be playing RuneScape 3 a lot, and I might even jump into Arc Age, but again, like, eh, Arc Age is a little bit weird with Trine Worlds. So yeah, also, Final Fantasy XIV, coming into the expansion, I'll be playing that game as well, and Elder Scrolls Online. Basically, yeah, basically half the list there. And I'm always playing Guild Wars 2. That should be a given. So, thanks for listening, guys. My name is Skylant. Either game, whatever you play on the list or not, let me know in the comments below. And either way, I hope you do have fun. And I'll see you in the next one.